three and a half million years ago, the human animals stopped swinging in trees and started walking on the ground. Each human brought down with them their own unique way of communicating, their own unique manner in which they display emotion, and their own conflicts and ego. With eight billion of these human beings walking around the same earth, you may have a strong, compelling urge to run back up into the safety of the trees. But don't. Instead, learn. Learn how to live among the humans. And a big yabba dabba dooba to everybody. Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome. Today we will be talking about conversations. Uh, conversations. What makes a good conversationalist? Uh, isn't that a great, beautiful, fancy thing to be a great conversationalist? Well, what does that mean? Does that mean somebody who talks about themselves a lot, talks about other people a lot? What does it mean? Well, we're going to figure that one out today uh, and what it means to be good at conversation. Because we don't really notice when people are good at conversations. We notice when they're bad. Um, when somebody's a good conversationalist, they walk away. We don't go, wow, what a good conversationalist. We just enjoyed the conversation. So we're going to talk about that, what makes a good conversationalist, and then we will talk about a little thing called reciprocation, and then we will talk about self-disclosure. And um, since I'm making this video twice, because I can't find the other one, I deleted it. I just made it yesterday. I had it, I believe me, I had it for 30 minutes. You would have been proud of me. I was so happy. So I'm going to try to keep this one under 30 minutes. Actually, this is quite easy stuff, very easy stuff. So let's get started. I will take a sip of my coffee. Uh, maybe that's why my lips look so red today. I'm not wearing lipstick, and if I am, red would not be my shade. I would go apple green. All right. Um, let's talk about this. Like I said, I don't want to make this any uh, harder than it is. It's pretty simple, actually. Okay, I am going to teach you today something called the principle of conversation. The principle of conversation. In other words, we think conversations just come up organically, meaning they, they come out of nowhere. Two people meet and they start talking and everything's great. Now, yeah, um, some two people can come up and one can just talk the air off the other one the whole time and then leave, and that wasn't a good conversation. So, how does a conversation work? Now, I do not want you to use this with your friends or with your family because conversations indeed start organically uh, with friends and family. In other words, if your mom comes home and uh, there's a broken dishes in the middle of the floor, Believe me, the conversation is going to start with, who broke the dishes? Well, that's no way to start a conversation, uh, but it is in that case. Talking more professional, more business, more how you talk to your office workers, how you talk to your co-workers. Uh, and let me tell you something right now on this video. Your co-workers are not your friends, necessarily. Uh, Researchers point out, even though it happened before, but researchers point out the Mary Tyler Moore show of 1970 shows that uh, made it seem like in Mary Tyler Moore, she went to work. Everybody at work was her friend. Yes, she had two personal friends as well, but almost all of her friendships took place at work or even outside of work. The people from work were there. Um so when we talk to our coworkers, we should know how to make a good conversation out of it. So let's go. Uh, the principle of conversations, five steps. Step one, opening. Yes, there must be an opening. It's usually, hi, how are you? Uh, hey, good to see you. But you start talking. Uh Sounds pretty normal, doesn't it? An opening? Of course I would start my conversation with an opening. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, I get a lot of students just come up to me. Hey, professor, can we ba 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 ba? 
by the way, hey, professor, wasn't an opening. That was just to get my attention. Uh, but, yeah, people can just come up. Listen, I was wondering if tomorrow night you can... What? No, hi, how are you? Ba, ba, ba. By the way, this works very well for letters as well, and emails. I had a friend who was in charge of salesmen when the pandemic hit. Well, salesmen couldn't go out uh, to make their sales. So he was in charge of basically telling them, y'all better still be working and we have some controls in to make sure you we can prove that you're still out there making your phone calls from home. But the letter he put out kind of started that. It said like, dear employee, as of April 1st, we will all... I looked at it. It was, I said, you know, I said to the guy, I said, these people have been wondering what's going on for the last two weeks. Uh, they're scared that they're going to die. They're scared they might know a family member who died. And you start off the letter as of April 1st. How about like, dear fellow employee, what terrible times we're in and confusing. I really hope everybody in your family is well. I wish them well, and please know that we are thinking of you. Next paragraph. As of April 1st. Okay, yeah. Let's give an opening first. Uh, and it kind of sets the mood. You can kind of see if the person's in a good mood. If they're not, opening, number one. Very simple. Hi, how are you? The other person, good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. All right, what's next? Next is something we call feed forward. Feed forward. You just don't blurt out your business. By the way, number three will be business. So you have opening, feed forward, and business. So you don't say, hi, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. As of April 1st, not yet. Hold off on the April 1st, man. Uh, not yet. Feed forward gives the other person a hint of what you want to talk about. It gives them a little bit of an idea, such as, hi, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Listen, have you got a minute to talk about the grade you gave me last semester? That's kind of a preview. Have you got a second to talk about? Now, why this is, is good? Why this is, 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 is good? It's not like I said, no, you're not streaming wrong. It's me. Uh, why this is also very good is we learn that politeness isn't saying please and thank you. Please take your feet off the couch. Thank you. We talked about how it involves something called autonomy. Giving the other person free will to make their own decisions. So... When you say, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Fine. Have you got a minute to talk about the grade you gave me? You're giving that person that autonomy we spoke about. By the way, if the person is in a bad mood or very busy where they can't give you good attention and they're intelligent, they should look up at you and say, you know what? Not right now. It's a bad time. And you know what? That's good. That's good. Would you rather have that or somebody go, yeah, let's hear it. I mean, so we want to give the person a little hint and we feed forward. In fact, what is the worst feed forward you could ever hear in your life? I will take a sip of coffee while you think about it. What is the worst feed forward line? you've ever heard in your life. You don't want to hear this. You never want to hear this. If you haven't got it yet, I will give you one more hint. It's in a relationship. I'll tell you from experience, this is how it went. Hi, Mark, how are you? Oh, good, how are you? Good. We got to talk. Oh, man, somebody says we got to talk. Get your umbrella up. So it's going to start raining on you, man. You're going to be in for a big storm. When somebody dies, they say, you better sit down. When they break up with you, they uh, 
They never say you better sit down. Uh, they say, we got to talk. They don't care whether you're standing or sitting. They just want to get the hell out of there. All right. Feed forward. Yeah, real nice. Uh, there are times where I'm walking and a student will see me on Chambers Street walking from building to building. And that's cool. I, I love when students come up to me uh, outside of the classroom. It's a good bonding experience. Uh, maybe we could talk of something that is more one-on-one -on -one than sharing it in a classroom. It's good stuff. Uh, I've had students come up to me while I'm walking to the subway, let's say. They go, hey, professor, how are you? I'm going, like, oh, good, how are you? They're like, good. And they're walking with me. I'm thinking, what, are you going to jake me? What, what's, what? I'm like, how, how's, how's your classes? They're like, oh, good, professor. How are yours? I'm like, good. They never get to their business. And the whole time I'm wondering, I can't relax. I'm wondering, did I fail this uh, person last summer? What, what's going on? Uh, even then, you could say your business. Hey, Professor, how are you? Good, I'm doing good. Great, do you mind if I walk with you a second? No, why? What's up? Oh, nothing. Nothing really. I'm, I'm just headed in the same direction. Okay. You stated your business. You have no business. You're just being friendly. Now that organic thing we were talking about can happen. Whichever, whoever wants to steer the conversation or what. There's not a specific topic. So... Even if you have no business, let the person know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just hanging. All right. Next, number three, the business. Uh, yeah, the business. Get to your business. What is this conversation about? Well, the other day you, Baba, so, hi, how are you? You got a couple minutes to talk about the grade you gave me? Last semester when I was in your class, I remember ba 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 ba. Okay, boom, boom, boom. When you are done with your business, what comes next? Number four, feedback. Feedback. Now, don't get all crazy about feedback. It's not a review. It's it's not feedback from a stereo speaker. It's not feedback like that. What feedback is is remember how. The feed forward gave you a hint of what the conversation was going to be about. Feedback lets the other person know that you're done now with your business. You're satisfied with it. Uh, so you might want to quickly summarize something up. Okay, so I understand. So if I change it, I'm going to change it from a C minus to a B minus, but not because you didn't deserve the C minus. It's that since then, you've done this. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with it. Great. Okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then is kind of the... the the, the feed forward line. We kind of summarized it. And if I say, okay, then, and the other person's not okay, that's the time where they go, whoa, 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 stop. Uh, on phones, what is our feed back on the phone? What is the signal that we give, especially when we're talking to somebody? We've been on the phone for a while and it's a drag. We want to end our business. We want to let the other person know we're out of topics. What is our feed forward then? It's usually a combination of an exhale or a sigh with the word anyways. Go something like this. Ah, anyways, that's a cue. So you also got to know this on the other side because I've had people go to me. I mean, I've said... Anyways, and the person keeps talking, which is okay, but if I were on the phone and somebody went to me, ah, anyways, I go, oh, 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 hang on. I, I just got two more things I want to talk to you about. I let them know. See what I mean about a good conversationalist? It's not using big words. It's not. It's, it's guiding the person through the conversation in a very, very logical, chronological way. Yeah, logical, chronological. That would be a good name for, uh, for a band. The logical, chronological guys. All right. Finally, closing. Yeah, you don't want to just state your business. Then go, okay, so we both agree. And they go, yep. And you just turn around and leave. 
The closing also gives you a chance to let the other person know how the conversation went. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I really look forward to meeting you. Bye-bye now. I've been using bye-bye now. I've never used bye bye now, but usually when I when I hang up now, I say bye bye now. It sounds kinder. It lets the person know the conversation went well. Um, so it is that simple. I told you this was pretty simple stuff, everybody. Uh, opening, hi, how are you? Feed forward. Do you have a moment to talk about the project, the upcoming project, the business? By next week, they're going to give us a project we have to do, blah, blah, blah feedback all right so we all agree this is it and now we could move forward and then close it later gator yeah all right uh so that is your principle of conversation five easy steps okay what else do i want to talk to you about i want to talk about something called reciprocation Something called reciprocation. What does that mean? That means what is good for the goose is good for the gander. And I don't know who's the goose and who's the gander. Uh, tit for a tat. Uh, an eye for an eye. Uh, though it's not evil, uh, it means what's good for one person is good for the other. In other words, we'll talk about that during the relationship takes, believe me. It's okay for this person to spend money, not that one. It's okay for this person to go hang out with their buddies, but not this one. Bop, 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 bop. But we're not on relationships yet. So what does reciprocation and conversation mean? It really means nobody hogs the conversation. Bop, 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 bop. Like a tennis game. Uh, you want to reciprocate. Uh, if somebody asks you how you're doing, when you are done, you ask them how they are doing. Uh, a lot of people in conversations, they don't reciprocate. If somebody listens to your story, guess what? When they start telling their story, you don't say, okay, I got to run now. Uh, you listen to their story. That is what reciprocation is in conversations. And that also makes a good conversationalist. I have a friend, uh, well, not a friend. See how we, and there will be a lecture on friend. I have a neighbor. That is on to me with the reciprocation. Because um, in the classroom, I talk a lot about myself. Uh, and on these tapes, I do to some certain extent. But in my personal life, I, I don't want to talk about myself. <laughs> Let him subscribe to YouTube. No, I'm kidding. Um, I have a neighbor that I ask him a bunch of questions. Uh, and he gives me the answers. But when he asks me the questions, I avoid them. Uh, with self-disclosure, I'll, I'll tell you how he kind of blew up on me one day. But, uh, yeah, if you ask questions that you want answers, then the other person, if they ask questions, they want answers. And also ask questions, how is your, how is your wife, how is your husband? After you say, fine, you say to them, how is yours? And they say, I got a divorce. And then you feel awful that you didn't remember. Ah, all right. That is reciprocation. The last thing. Wow. Seven, 18 minutes I'm going on, man. I am flying through this lecture. There's some good stuff in it, though. Don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, there, there's, a, there's about that much stuff about conversations. Those are pages, by the way. Uh, I'm giving you, like, maybe three pages. But that's all. You get these three down. I mean, you get that principle down. That's all you need. All right. What is self-disclosure? Self-disclosure is when you tell other people about yourself. Self-disclosure is how we kind of, uh, we bond. Uh, we tell people things, and then we hope they reciprocate and tell us things about themselves. Uh, it's not fair if somebody asks me, what is your religion? And I tell them, and I say to them, what is your religion? And they don't tell me. Uh, there was this professor at work. I, I, I walked out, I, I, and I, we were walking down Harrison Street, and I said, so are you married? And they just kind of grinned at me. I said, well, you don't like marriage? And they went, nah. I said, so what? I walked about a half a block with them. 
And I could tell they weren't going to tell me anything about themselves. Okay, that's cool. Uh, but then I'm not going to self-disclose to them. Uh, there are times that people self-disclose too much. What do we call that? Too much information. I don't want to know it. I don't want to know everything that happened. We also self-disclose on the internet, which you've got to be nuts to even show people what you're eating for breakfast. Because if you're eating a sausage now in 30 years when you're with a, with a group, vegetarians against the Klan, and they see a picture of you eating a sausage when you were 20 years old, oof, ouch. Uh, so self-disclosure, be careful. Uh, we do use it to bond, but it is also a double-edged sword. In other words, people can use the information that you give them uh, to cause you harm. Another thing is, when do you self-disclose? That is big. Uh, let's say you have uh, herpes. Uh, at what point in the dating scene, I, I didn't say marriage, in what point in the dating, the first date, the second date, the third date, the fourth date, I mean, there's usually not a fifth and a sixth. There's usually, you're usually kind of like going steady. I don't know. I don't know too, too many people say, oh, I really like this person. We're on our 26th date. Uh, when do you disclose that? Let's say you've been in prison. Let's say you've done time for a stupid credit card fraud. You made a mistake. You grabbed some numbers and you, you sold them for a couple hundred bucks. And now you, you got to do eight months on Rikers. Uh, when do you disclose that to the to 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 the person that you're out on a date with? Uh, what other kind of stuff do you self disclose? I once dated a woman who didn't disclose until the twenty third date. No, I'm kidding. Until I'd say maybe three months time that she had a child. I have no problem. I had no problem, and now, now Sheila will have a big problem with me dating somebody with a child. Uh, I would have had no problem dating a person with a child. Back then, um, I thought, that's not good. It took this long to tell me that. Uh, I didn't understand as a mother, she probably did the exact right thing, uh, you know, make sure before even introducing me to the idea of a kid that I'd be able to handle it. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, I, I got angry over uh, that. She didn't tell me. I guess now that I look back on it, I expected the self-disclosure to come a little bit earlier. Uh, now that I think about it, the self-disclosure was probably the perfect time for her. So she did a, a very good job taking it, finding first off. And by the way, she did tell me, so that meant I passed the dad test. All right. Uh, yeah, be very careful with self-disclosure. Uh, my advice to you is uh, be reciprocal, but wait for them to give it, and then you give out a little bit. All right. Wow, 22 minutes and 48 seconds. I don't know why I talked to 30 minutes later. I, I don't want this to be a short video. I want you to get your money's worth. However, there's really not much more to talk about. All right. So um, that's it. Principle of conversation, reciprocation, and self-disclosure. All right, everybody. Uh, the next video is a good one. Uh, I'm going to start talking about relationships. Uh, the first video is about stages, stages in a relationship. Uh, and usually we mess up in every one of those stages. That's why 50% of marriages end in divorce. Uh, that's why, well, 50% end in divorce, but then we got like 10% who don't believe in divorce. So they're still hanging on. And then you got the other ones that are kind of ready for divorce, but they're not sure yet. Wow, since you you start dribbling it all down, there might be about 20% of couples out there who are happy. Well, I'm going to make you one of those 20 percenters because we're going to find out all the places where, where we make mistakes. And then uh, you're going to go home and you're going to tell your partner, hey, let's do it over. We got to break up. No, I'm just kidding. All right. 
That's it. Yabba dabba do everybody. Hey, look, no cats bothered me the whole time. It's only <laughs> now my cat just looked at me and said, it was only 24 minutes, dude. All right, that's it. Once again, yabba dabba do. Thank you for tuning in. Leave a comment if you will. Have your friends see these videos if you think it can help. And that's all I got for you today. I will see you on the next video. Thank you and farewell.